Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. God's own people dance for joy. Oh, come before the Lord and play for him on glad tambourines and let your trumpet sound. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia, singing Alleluia. Good day. We're delighted that we could gather together in uh, this, this way. We bring ourselves, and, and maybe what's happened in our city in the last week or so can be discouraging. We're trying to build up the right thing, and yet things can go backwards and uh, be destructive, and that can be d discouraging. But I'm reminded of, of a, a sister who was preparing some children for a special Olympics, and they were ready, and they got into the race, and then they noticed in, during the race that one of their friends had fallen. And so the group of runners stopped, went back, picked her up, and holding hands, all of them came forward across the finish line. Uh, in a way, that's what we do when we come here. There can be all kinds of struggles along the way. We fall, but we try to pick each other up in the power of Christ. And that's happening right now as we gather in the name of the Father, the Son, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today, Jesus will encounter a very persistent mother seeking uh, assistance for her daughter. We can be persistent, too, in asking the Lord to guide us in our lives. Lord, you make salvation available to all people. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you offer your gifts, and you do not revoke them. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you come for the loss of every race and nation. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. God of Israel, through covenant obedience, your chosen people approached your holy mountain. God of all nations, through faith in Jesus, a Gentile woman found welcome 
at the table of your children. Let people of every race, language, and way of life find our assembly to be a house of prayer for all peoples, whether foreigners or native people, all welcomed as friends, where strangers are called sisters and brothers. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. In our first reading, it's right at the end of uh, the book of uh, uh, the prophet Isaiah. And he gives a vision that all people will be welcome to God's holy mountain in prayer. That's the ultimate goal and vision. And it, it's reassuring in our time of where we are taking ourselves in the Lord. In the second reading, Paul still struggling that some of his fellow Israelites have not recognized Jesus as Messiah, says to the Gentiles, uh, let God's mercy in you and the way you respond uh, become an example that maybe will entice more Israelites to also consider coming to the Lord. We never give up on each other. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, to do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants. All who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and all who hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable to on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh God, my God, let all the nations praise you. O oh God, be gracious and bless us, and let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon earth, and all nations learn your saving help. O oh God, my God, let all the nations praise you. Let the nations be glad and exult, for you rule the world with justice. With fairness, you rule the peoples. You guide the nations on earth. O oh God, my God, let all the nations praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give us blessing till the ends of the earth stand in awe. My God, my God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. 
just as you once disobeyed God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too now may receive mercy. For God delivered to all disobedience, that he might have mercy on them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Jesus did not say a word to her in answer. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. Jesus said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the women came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, A woman Great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. I once was walking down the corridor of the waiting room in the ICU unit at Evanston Hospital. And a family inside the, the waiting room uh, uh, called me in. And I'm thinking, my, I'm here just at the right moment to maybe be able to pray with them and console them. And as I came in, they uh, pointed to a crossword puzzle that they had been working on and said, uh, Father, this one word, it's a three letter word for a piece of clothing that a priest wears. Do you know what it is? Well, it's an L, A-L-B. So there are times when we are surprised by what's expected of us or the role we think we have is, is put aside. There's a magazine, Christian Century, that occasionally has a column, How My Mind Has Changed. And they ask an author, you know, in the last 10 years or so, in what way has your mind changed? It's the sort of thing that we see in the Gospel of Mark and his influence on the Gospel of Matthew that we heard today. Near the beginning of Matthew, who's really concerned with the, the people in the Jewish community as they, they become followers of Jesus, uh, 
we hear Jesus say uh, to the disciples, you only go to the lost children of Israel. We have to use our energy there. But by the time Matthew's gospel ends, Jesus' message is to his disciples, go out to all nations, everyone, with the good news. And so minds can change. In the gospel we hear, Jesus and some of his disciples are 50, 50 miles into Gentile territory. Perhaps they were just trying to take a break from all the hostility that the, the religious authorities were, were placing upon Jesus. And they encounter this persistent Gentile mother needing help for her daughter. And the result of the exchange is Jesus changes his mind. Some say, well, he resisted the woman even in a way insulted her because he wanted to try to draw more of her faith out. I'm not sure of that. I think Jesus had to listen and seeing her sense of faith, he was touched and moved to cure the daughter. Jesus saw things differently and he changed his mind. It's not so surprising when, when we consider Jesus was, was a human. Yes, God, but in all things but sin, he had to accept, as we do, human limitations. He could get hungry and thirsty. He had to learn to read. And as we all will do, encounter death. We could ask, does Jesus still change his mind? When he rose from the dead, he still retains the qualities of being human, even though, yes, he's the second person of the Holy Trinity. But in the flesh, God, Jesus, is still like us. And I think this has uh, implications for the way we pray. We can say, well, God is changeless. And even before I know what I'm going to pray, God already knows. So do I really have to go that way? But if we focus on praying to a Jesus who can change his mind as he did for the Canaanite woman, we can be brought into prayer as real conversation. Beside the Canaanite woman, another resourceful and witty woman, St. Teresa of Avila in the 16th century, had a very special relationship with God. And she wrote a great deal about that, that experience, that encounter. And one of the famous stories uh, about St. Teresa of Avila, she's uh, riding on a donkey cart and the cart turns over and Teresa winds up in a muddy puddle. And she says to God in this very personal way of praying, if this is the way you treat your friends, no wonder you have so few of them. In one of her books, she gives uh, some advice about prayer. Think about this in terms of encountering the human Jesus in your prayer. She says, remain in the Lord's presence continually and speak to him. Pray to him in your necessities and complain to him about your troubles. Be merry with him in your joys. All this you can do, she says, without set prayers, but with words that fit your desires and needs. This is an excellent way to advance in prayer, St. Teresa says. 
And she concludes, avoid being bashful with God. From the Canaanite woman desperate for her daughter, we learn to pray outside the box, maybe outside the ways we usually pray. And we discover in praying to Jesus, the human Jesus, that Jesus is close to us and we to him. He's our brother. He's part of the family. And as we go through these difficult times of trying to change, but finding that we stumble at times, knowing that uh, Jesus can change his mind about us can be a very powerful way of living the good news. We're reminded, as St. Paul said, that as we run this race towards, towards the second coming of the Lord, we do so together. And so we can profess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. He will come again to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Lord, on our journey, we come to you in prayer and offer now our petitions. That the faith and joy of believers attract unbelievers into God's loving arms, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people of every race and culture seek to understand those who are different from themselves, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are on the verge of giving up find strength to persevere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That every immigrant and alien be treated with dignity as a beloved child of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who form this community of faith root out prejudice and welcome every stranger, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, especially Patricia Martin, find their true home in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the mass intentions of this week be heard, especially for Anthony and Louise Arado, Danila Hortel, Lucille Sipiora, Asuncion Ong, Jeanette Link, Mario Loza Garcia, Mary T. Smith, Consortia Q. Salva, John F. Lowry, Dr. Jose Yulo, Visitacion and Dominidor Ramos, Hattie Major, 
Mary Zelasko. Special intentions for Margaret and Pat Mulville, Ami Abasco, Noemi Dilla, and all our parishioners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that all our petitions and prayers be placed upon your holy mountain, where all are welcome. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray then, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, that these gifts be acceptable to God, our almighty Father and Creator. Receive our offering, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do for this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your spirit, you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By working through your power, it comes about, O oh Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of angels, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, 
whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, he reclined at table. Jesus himself took bread in his hands and giving you his heavenly father thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And then he said, do this in memory of me, The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your son. And in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with your very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, Saint Padre Pio, Saint Hilary, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant us peace in our day that with the help of your mercy, we may be free from all sin and safe from all distress as we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your disciples, 
My peace I give you. My peace is with you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you. We share with those close to us some sign of Christ's peace and presence. On you stay, qui tollis peccatum undi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccatum undi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccatum undi, Dona nobis pacem. This is that special time of communion with the Lord. The power of spiritual communion, perhaps we have learned uh, at a more deep le level how powerful that can be. And so the Lord is waiting to come into our hearts and lives. Here is Christ who calls us to his one banquet table and blessed are those who are called to the banquet of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for, again, attending this spiritual communion we have with each other. Again, a reminder that uh, if uh, you feel comfortable with it, uh, we do have masses here at St. Padre Pio Parish at St. Hilary Church uh, every morning at 8.30, Monday through Saturday. And uh, masses on the weekend would be five o'clock on Saturday in English and then seven that evening in Spanish. And on Sunday morning, we have English Mass at 9.30 and Mass in Spanish at 11, plus a, a five o'clock Mass in Tlagog, the uh, Filipino language uh, also that Sunday afternoon. So if any of those fit your, your schedule, please uh, stop in. You can also make a reservation online, uh, go to our, to our parish website, uh, that helps facilitate. But uh, 
if, please consider coming and joining us in person uh, if you're comfortable doing that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We have gathered in the nourishing and comforting presence of Christ. Let us go forth in Christ's peace and love. And let's be church after church. Praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. We, the daughters and sons of him who built the valleys and plains, praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sees. to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his way.